I might have got on this blessed day, the first day of Advent, prepare us, oh God, that we might be able to greet you like we should. Open our minds, soften our hearts, unite us, that we may have strength of limb to serve you. May the words that I speak bring you praise, dear God, and never, never shame. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The sermon for this blessed morning, preparing for guests. Preparing for guests this morning. When I was a child, Saturday mornings were very uh, different <laughs> for us. Well, they were standard, but different for children. We had, my mother would wake us up to the sound of Mahia Jackson, which meant you get out of bed and something would always be fried Saturday morning, something. Sometimes you liked what was fried, sometimes you didn't, but it was fried. So after breakfast, we each had our chores to do. And uh, my chore, being the oldest child, was to wash cloth diapers. I despised my siblings because I had to wash cloth diapers and do other things. At the end of the day, when we wanted to go out and play ball and do other things, and my mother would check, she'd check for dust and see if the diapers were clean enough. And then at the, at the end of the day, she would always say, this house is still not ready for company. She needed her house to be immaculate. She was always concerned that somebody was coming in to, to see how clean her house was. She lived for those, uh, those uh, disinfective commercials. She just get just really giddy about those things. I often said, I think she bathed us in bleach to sanitize us, but she was always concerned with being prepared for guests. And our text reminds us that there's a spiritual preparation for guests that the text talks about. And the end of the year is Advent. Advent is a dual season for us because it's it prepares us for the second coming of Christ and also prepared us for the birth of Christ. And how do we get ready? As it has been said earlier, it's been a tough year. It's been a COVID-19 year. It's been an economically depleted year. It has been a hard, hard year. Our heartstrings have been pulled at. Our hearts have been broken, but it's been a tough year. And, and during Advent, we are expected to be get prepared for a guest for company. How do we just how do we do that? Yeah, the COVID thing has probably helped us more than, than we like to imagine. We know how bad it has been, but it's always a silver line and then a blessing. God always gives us a blessing in the midst of turmoil. And part of that blessing is we've had to slow down. And I'll, I'll have to admit, I've felt so guilty about having to slow down. I ought to be doing something. I ought to be out doing something. And yet God says it's time to slow your body down, slow your mind down. It is a time for deep, deep reflection. You had a whole year to look over. And the question is, Lord, what was that year like for me? How much time did I trifle away? How much time did I use wisely? How kind was I? Did I do things that you wanted me to do? You can't go, life doesn't have a back door. You can't go back and fix anything. But looking back helps us to be grateful for all that we've accomplished and uh, long for getting more done and to be able to say, Lord, next year I'll do this differently. I'll do this better. A time of reflection and think about all the weddings you attended. Think about all the births, all the babies that are born and think about even think about all the people that you buried. You know, we have buried several of our members this year, but I tell you, every graveside service, every church service, I have thanked God for that person who has come into my life, even for a short time. It made my life so much richer, so much so better. For the smiles that I had gone at church and the hugs and the embraces and the stories of that person's life that that person was willing to share with me and others. It's a time of reflection, a time of asking the question, Lord, can I be like that person? Can I be a better person? We don't have to feel guilty because the year is gone and we can't relive it, but the reflection ought to cause us to pause and to say, Lord, 
you gave me so many golden opportunities to live my life. You gave me so much in the midst of the pain that's happening. We still were able to find joy in the midst of this COVID situation. We're still able to laugh at our friends. We're still able to share tender moments, still able to, to, to be God's people and to realize and to know and to understand that no matter how bad things get, God has a plan to make things better. No matter how much death comes a knocking, soon and very soon, we're all going to see the king. And soon and very soon, we'll all unite around that wonderful throne of grace. Our time of reflection. One of my favorite songs is sung uh, by two wonderful divas. Gladys Knight and Barbara Streisand both sing the song uh, uh, the way we were memories. And it talks about mystic water, watercolored memories and the way we were. And it talks about things that are so painful to remember. We just simply choose to forget. The memories that linger, the memories that we have are, the, are what makes us and shapes us. Even the bitter, the bad memories, we are shaped and formed and hopefully made better by all the things that we do remember. The things that we don't want to repeat, the things that we do want to repeat. It is Advent season, the holy season, and hope comes to God's people. Faith comes to God's people. Charity comes to God's people. All the attributes of who we are come to God's people. And we're able to do our reflection and to look back how we treated our spouses, how we treated our children, how we treated the world. And understand and know that whatever we did, God gives us a chance in the coming days ahead to do and make things better. So nobody needs to beat you over the head. Nobody needs to tell you, you weren't a good enough steward. You got a chance in the next coming days and years to be a better steward and not to make excuses for what you don't do. To say, Lord, I am moving on toward this thing called sanctification. I'm getting sanctified, I'm getting better day by day. You've justified me by my faith, Lord. And I'm living this life of sanctification. And during this Advent season, I am so surely getting myself prepared, prepared to laugh again, prepared to love again, prepared to say that the change is gonna come, prepared to say that this nightmare that we've lived politically is coming to an end, but there won't be any miracle cures that we have to be prayerful and faithful and be the right kind of advocates to support good and healthy and wholesome leaders. We gotta give them, have their backs. We gotta stop being bitter, stop whining, stop complaining and live a, faithful, fruitful life that says we can make things better. As a wonderful President Obama said, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And more importantly, yes, we will. So after we've done our reflection, the second thing we need to do during Advent is to be thankful. I am so richly, I'm so blessed to have a church family like Sunday there. I'm so blessed to have a biological family. I'm so blessed to have extended family. I am so blessed. And if we can give thanks to God for all that God has given us, if we can give thanks to God for allowing us to attend college, to, the, to attend trade school, to have friendships and to be relationships, that's what life is about. It is not about the stuff that we amass. It is not about the tangible. It's about the intangible. It's about relationships. It's about friendships. It's about things that we hold dear in common. Uh, and we need to be able to say that to people. You know, I come into seminary and, and because men and women are my age, I felt an autom automatic kinship. You know, Mike Lewis is out leader this morning, I've always felt a kinship to Mike because I she had shared conversation and I growing up with similar and shared conversation. Uh, there's something that you connect with somebody's spirit, others in the church, some younger, some older, you have a kinship with because people allow you into their lives to share and they allow you into their lives to say you are part of who I am and I'm glad you're here. And we gotta be able to say to our friends that we make every day, I'm glad you came my way. And when we have to say goodbye, we gotta be able to say, I'm glad you passed my way. Thank you for what you gave me. Thank you for being my brother. Thank you for being my sister. And thank you for, for not, I don't, have to, I don't have to owe you anything for that. 
you gave it freely. You were my friend freely. You were my you you supported me freely. And that's the that's the awesome thing about being thankful. Thank you, God, for being my God. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Savior. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Sister Mayo. Thank you, Brother Mountain. Thank you, Brother Jones. Thank you, all of you, for being the people who got my back, who love and care for me, even in the days when I don't feel like I want to care for myself. Thank you. We give thanks. Give thanks for a dutiful wife. Give thanks for a dutiful husband. Give thanks for children. Give thanks for a job that God was able to give you, even the days that you didn't want to get up and go. Thank God. Be thankful. That we live in a world, even in the midst of COVID, midst of all the things, we're some of the richest people in the world. Think about our brothers and sisters in Asia. Think about our brothers and sisters in Africa and think about how much stuff we have. Just be thankful. And then our thanks let it, our abundance flow out. And, and when we're asked to give and we're asked to help, that we're grateful to do it. And, and we just give our best. We don't, we don't give our worst. We give our best. We sometimes give things that we want ourselves so somebody else can have them because we know how God is still blessing us. And we're still here. 4% of the population now, 13 million, 13.2 million actually represents 4% of the United States population, when 4%, four out of 100 folk have a disease, it really translates into probably 20% of the people in the country who have been impacted. And we're still here. God still has placed us here. And instead of just being glad to be here, we ought to be a blessing to somebody else. We ought to be a blessing to God's people because we are so thankful and you get up in the morning so thankful, God, that you're here and you're able to do something with that. So the third thing we ought to do as we reflect is to declutter our lives. What bogs you down? What keeps you from being the best Roger, the best the, the best brother Lewis, the best sister Mayor, the best brother Joe, what keeps you from being the best? Is it procrastination? Is it envy? Is it greed? Whatever it is, all of us have something that we need to declutter out of our hearts and our lives. And we need to bring it to God's altar and leave it and say that my greed, my desire for, for stuff has made me less than I should be. Lord, help me to understand and remember what's important in my life. Help me, Lord. Help me to give words of encouragement. Don't help me to be, help me to be less cynical. You know, a lot of folk are cynical under the guise of being funny. They say hurtful things about your weight and about your skin tone and your hair and all those things. And the guys have been funny. Pain is pain. Nobody wants to be ridiculed. Nobody wants to be laughed at. Nobody wants to be talked about. Your style, your car, whatever you got, it's a blessing from God. And it's not our job to make anybody feel less. It's to pick them up, lift as we climb. That's our job in this world. As we declutter, what do you want to throw away? What do you want to get out of your closet to make your spirit better? And lastly, as we reflect on what God has done for us, the word commitment comes into play. Lord, I want to be committed to making the world a better place. I was telling somebody, God must be starting a, a baseball league in heaven. 100 baseball players died in, have died this year, 2020. This is, as Sister Mayo said, the year's not even over, but 100 baseball players passed away. One of my favorite players was Bob Gibson, the famous pitcher for the Cardinals. Bob walked out on the mound to a young pitcher and said to, him, said to the young pitcher, boy, if it wasn't so many people out here, I'd slap you down pitching so pitifully. Broke the young pitcher's heart. But at the end of the game, Bob Gibson sat him down and said, I'm going to work with you and make you a better pitcher. He didn't just yell and scream at him. He knew that he had the gifts and he had, the, he had something that was passed on to him that he could pass on to somebody else. So his commitment was that I'm gonna take what God has given me 
and I will make a better baseball player and a better baseball player, and he'll pass it on, and he'll pass it on, and he'll pass it on. So our commitment ought to tell us that whatever we got, we're going to use it to make people better. We're going to use it to make Christians more powerful. We're going to use it to make God's kingdom better, because Advent is a time when we do the reflection, and we don't just stop there. We get up and do something that makes God proud, and do something to make your family proud. Everything I've done in my life is to make this woman who worked clean houses for four dollars a day, with varicose veins and her legs as big as we call them in a country, Banny Hens egg. They were so huge that varicose veins, and she would walk to work. And she was so committed to us getting an education and not being hungry and not being dirty. And I said, everything that I do, I want to make Miss Bernice Esseline Hobson proud of me. I want to make her proud because what she has lived for and what she has sacrificed will not be in vain. So I want to be committed. I want to be committed because I stand on the shoulders of this woman who worked as a maid and I stand on the shoulders of grandparents who wore janitors and I stand on the shoulders of those folk who pick cotton. So during this Advent season, I'm humbled by my legacy. I'm humbled by the people who love me in spite of myself. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference because we live a life filled with passion and feeling and concern for others and love for others. So much love for others that we don't have time to pity ourselves. So much love for others that we don't have time to be angry about our situation. So much love for others that we rejoice when others do better than we do. We rejoice when they're able to have better jobs and more money and, be and, and, and better homes or better cars or whatever, we rejoice because we all share in the fruits and the success of others. That's how God so planned it. And when God plans and organizes that for us, this is Advent season, folk. Take time to slow down. Take time to thank your friends and your family and those who have journeyed with you. Take time to show people your love and more than anything else, have faith that tomorrow is going to be bigger, brighter, and better. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Lord God, during this holy season, this Advent season, we give you thanks for the friendships and the relationships and everything that we have that matters, oh God. Be with us as we endure so much because you have allowed us to feel and respond to your love. For those who are on Facebook and need to respond, they know we have made ways for them to be able to contact us at Centenary or contact, contact the pastor. And for those who will be with us during the glory sightings, if you so choose to become a part of God's family, then it will be your time. But we give thanks to God for this morning and this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.